This is Speaking with the Enemy on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Here is Louis Butko. Yes, the show Speaking with the Enemy, the enemy this week, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And here to discuss the voice of the Blue Bombers, Derek Taylor, DT on SC. And uh, Derek, uh, the word dynasty is, is not being said a lot, I know, around Winnipeg, but outside of Winnipeg, People are starting to think uh, there's a chance this team uh, could could be the, the new dynasty of the CFL. Man, does Coach O'Shea ever hate when you bring up the word dynasty to him, right? But, I mean, as fans, we don't, we don't have any players to inspire. We don't have to keep players focused on this week. We have to talk about the fact that they've won back-to-back Grey Cups and they are, at the moment, the runaway best team in the Canadian Football League and are very clearly the favorites to win the Grey Cup. Nothing means that they're going to win the Grey Cup. But yeah, like when you win three Grey Cups in a row, you're you're talking about a dynasty that we haven't seen, you know, borderline Louis in our lifetimes. So, you know, older fans will certainly remember the Edmonton Elks of the 78 to 82s, but this is very special what's happening in Winnipeg right now. And you mentioned Mike O'Shea, I mean, Zach Caleros, Willie Jefferson, Jeff Cohn. I mean, the, the bodies that are in the building right now, Again, they, they don't want to talk about that word because it's it's not just a mantra. It's they want to go one and oh every week. And and we hear it so often in sports, but for for whatever reason, it really seems to stick in Winnipeg. Why is that? Yeah, I wish I knew. And honestly, success probably breeds success is maybe the best answer I could come up with. It it, it works. But I mean, if you had to ask me, are they thinking about how they're going to handle their personnel? If they were to clinch first place in the West, I would think, okay, they probably put a little bit of thought into that. But most of the focus on this week, this week has certainly been, hey, we've got Hamilton coming in. We want to beat Hamilton. They do this. We do this. Let's let's look at them and, and go that way. I, I, I think they're really good, at least. It's, it's certainly externally, like to us in the media, they're terrific at controlling the message. I really believe, talking to the guys, even amongst themselves, they they don't, but you, you know, Louis. There's one numbers guy in there is going. Oh, you know, our magic number is three now, and then uh, that would be the West Final. And the West Final, winning the West Final is the easiest road to the Grey Cup. Well, winning a division, getting to a division final, hosting it yeah. is the best way to get to the Grey Cup, just on common sense and you know the history alone. So there's somebody in there, but they're great at I think controlling the message both externally and internally. I guess that what the highs don't get too high, the lows don't get too low. I mean, these are two teams we saw each other in this building just a few months ago, and they've gone in completely different directions. Unfortunately, uh, as an outsider, I want to get your opinion. What do you make of the Tie Cats right now? I wish I'd been able to see them fully healthy mm-hmm. for much of the season because you look at the pieces on this Tie Cats defense and. It's the best defensive tackle duo in the CFL, as I think it, it is. Micah Johnson and, and Dylan with Julian Hauser, fantastic now that he's got a chance to shine. Linebackers, yes. Healthy defensive backfield, absolutely yes. But there's been some six-game injured lists and stuff in there. Offensively, mm. Mm, yeah. mm, center out, moving this guy out new guys here trade this guy trade for this guy bring this guy in and he allows a lot of pressure okay brandon banks not there anymore remember how great he was in 2019 and sure there are weapons and then oh by the way hamilton doesn't feel the need to run the ball with the running back which as a as a non-running back guy i do enjoy that but you know it just it's one of those things that you point to that hamilton does uh, i i wish honestly for me it's it's injuries and it's inconsistency at quarterback that that i think have for me, led Hamilton to three and nine. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but uh, coming off the bye week, they're they're encouraging. They're encouraged going into this game. How does Winnipeg? You mentioned it. How do they avoid the the trap game? The yeah, you know, you clinch the playoff spot. You're twelve and one. You're sitting comfortably in first place. This Tie Cats team does have a lot to play for. How does Winnipeg avoid the trap game uh, narrative this week? Yeah, I, I, a lot of times in games like this where they're playing what I would perceive to be lesser opponents, they'll have slow starts. They won't start – BC, they started lightning fast, but that's another elite team. Calgary, they played real strong. But early season, Ottawa, first mm-hmm. game against Hamilton, they've had some slow starts uh, offensively. So uh, that would be the thing, like, you know, put together a couple of drives, the right – have the right plays ready to go. 
for this Hamilton team and know that this defense is going to be tough. But if they had, if every week they could just book an opening drive like they had in the Banjo Bowl, where they just <laughs> down the field in whatever it was, 11 plays and score a touchdown. Yeah, let, let's have some of that. Uh, eventually, what we've seen all season long from the Bombers is it's going to click in on offense eventually, sometime in the first half. It'd be great to have that right off the bat. And defensively, I mean, they're allowing yards, both in the run game and in the pass game. They're allowing yards. And this season versus last year, they're allowing points, too. And especially, the they're still very good in the fourth quarter, but last year was historically good in the fourth quarter. I think it was – they allowed six points in fourth quarters of games that they cared about. So that's over 12 games plus the playoff. They were yeah. ridiculous. So, yeah, I mean, you just have to know that, okay, Hamilton presents these possibilities – and here are our opportunities on offense. Let's go get a couple of them early because that'll change the whole tenor of the game. I know our, our former colleague at TSN, Dave Naylor, is uh, is always pretty quick to point out just how good Winnipeg has been under Zach Caleros. And uh, I, I've been saying this all week on Cats today. Maybe it's because it's the Hall of Fame game and Ricky Ray is going in. And, you know, you go back to Zach and Ricky Ray winning uh, the, the Grey Cup in, in, with the Argos. He's got three great cups already. He's an MOP. He looks like he's the favorite for MOP. You probably know where I'm going with this question. Zach Caleros, you've seen a lot of great quarterbacks in this league. Is Zach Caleros, what does he need to be in that conversation? Oh, more great cups. Like more, is, yeah. more great cups would, would absolutely be the way. A third straight great cup when that first one was so improbable in 2019 mm -hmm. would, would absolutely have him up there. Zach's just Zach's incredible, right? And Hamilton Tiger Cat fans know it from that 2015 season was unbelievable. With the borderline, I, I was today like, would I have voted him MOP even though he played just 11 and a half games that year? He he was that good, and he is that good now because the circumstances allow it. His improvisational greatness, and that's a phrase mm -hmm. we've used on the radio probably four or five times this year because he goes horizontal to make a pass to Dylan. To Dalton shown in the uh, in the BC game in week number five, and he in Montreal in week number whatever it was week number ten, he is getting absolutely bombarded on the first nine dropbacks. The tenth one, he escapes and he hammers one, which I think was the Dalton shown again. And you go, this guy is just he's absolutely special with his athleticism. That's not necessarily run heavy athleticism, and his ability to make plays when disaster like there's traffic and disaster all around me. But I'm going to find the one thing that 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 works. Uh, he is unbelievable. He's when you look at this team right now, there's four or five guys that could end up in the ring of honor for the mm -hmm. Bombers. And, and Kalaris is, I mean, three straight great cups. Like you can count on one hand the number of guys who've been a part of that. Well, and again, Ty Cats fans could probably appreciate this. The the drought, ending the drought in, in Winnipeg probably is going to go a long way to just uh, his resume. And I guess off the field is what do you what's your takeaway from from Zach? Because I haven't talked to him, you know, as a player in a while, but he really level headed, calm. Is he still that guy? And and, and what what's your react? What's your act? How do you feel when you talk to Zach? What do you take away? There are a lot of annoyingly level-headed guys on this team, and I say that with all the love, but guys will make unbelievable plays that uh, that guys like me who wish we were better high school football players back in the day go, I don't know how you did that. And they're like, yeah, that's just what I do. Well, no, but it's really – you're really incredible. Uh, Zach is just – he's very calm. Uh, it's, it's funny because the – Coach O'Shea and the guys talking about – He's a great leader in the locker room. And then we kind of get uh, the media personality of him, right? Where you don't want to say anything inflammatory. You don't want to necessarily, you don't want to necessarily give all the things that the other team does well, but you give them, you give them a bunch of love. You're never going to call anybody bad. You're not going to say they're weak in this spot. You're just going to, you know, respect the opponent and move on. Whereas wish, I kind of wish he'd light things on fire every once in a while. Right. Just, <laughs> But that's that's not who we that's not who the front facing Zach Kalaris is. Uh, and honestly, like you see some of the incredible plays he's made this year, he just jogs up to high five the guy who did it. And he's not, he's just not super impressed with himself. Though the rest of us are 
you know, yeah. waiting to this, this waiting for the chance to write Zach Kalaros MOP on our ballots. Uh, speaking of awards, uh, Dalton shown, does he have, uh, does he have the West nominee for rookie of the year locked up? Does he have the league rookie of the year locked 10 touchdowns? It yeah. looks like he's going to be a thousand yard receiver. I mean, he, he's been a real uh, bright spot, obviously, but uh surprise, maybe you saw him in camp. Does oh. this guy come out of nowhere? Beyond stunned, beyond <laughs> stunned. And yeah, like, I don't even know who else is in the, when a guy gets double digit touchdowns, who else is even in competition yeah. for rookie of the year? I remember seeing uh, shown in rookie camp and he went, oh, okay, 83. Okay. Yeah, he looks like he belongs. He's good mm-hmm. size. Oh, he's actually quite quick too. Okay. And he, I think Dalton goes about 220, maybe just a hair under. You go, it's a good body and, and that's, that's good. Okay. Evolves through camp, filled in for Greg Ellingson when Ellingson got injured. And then the final day of camp, boom, officially, officially, unofficially, he was a starter. And then right from the jump, like one of the first plays, and I forget if it was his first catch, but he caught the ball and Ottawa Sherrod Baltimore just drilled him, mm-hmm. popped it free for a fumble. And we were in the booth going, ooh, that happened to a rookie. How is a rookie going to bounce back? Will he go, will this send him into the doldrums? Or, you know, is he going to come back? He then lit it on fire for the next 13 games. And he went, yeah. okay, yep, that's that's what everybody would like. So Sean, is, he's really special. He, I don't know if people know that he is fast. And, man, he's got wiggle and he gets open. And one of the big praises for him is just how how smart he is when, when things break down. I was looking at the numbers into last week's game. And with the quarterback under pressure and out of the pocket, Schoen had 260 yards receiving, which was more than the second and third place guy in the CFL combined. You know, like, yeah, it makes a ton of sense with with how this has worked for uh, for the Bombers. He has been truly something special, and and I think Bomber fans are just you know. Fingers crossed that he's somehow back next year. Uh, the Before we let you go, I know we're, we're tight on time here. The injury report, uh, day three is really, uh, I'm, I, you know, when we get a better idea. But no Stanley Bryant, no Drew Waltarski, especially Stanley Bryant, three-time offensive lineman of the year. I, I, is he trending? Is that an opportunity for the Ticats maybe? Is he out? What's He'll be fine. Oh, he was he's back in fine. Today. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> May, apologies to Julian Hauser, but yeah, you're going to have to deal with both tackles. No, Stanley just took a maintenance day the other day. Right. Uh, he'll be fine. Drew Walatarski uh, in knee brace. It looked mm-hmm. like, I mean, everything is hypothesis. That looked like a that looked like a, a bit of a knee injury. Uh, Nick Taylor won't play. Uh, this none of this is official, but yeah. Nick Taylor won't play. Noah Hallett injured in that game won't play mm-hmm. either. They're on their third, but they're on their third weak side linebacker, and currently their third safety the bombers have been riddled with injuries and yet the standings don't kind of reveal that which is a testament to how great they are this year uh and uh, you know uh unfortunate not to see noah hallett uh in the lineup uh mcmaster boy london ontario raised uh i'm sure he would have loved to have uh put on a show in front of uh, the tim hortons faithful or, or, or unfaithful i'm sure is that we should call them uh dt <laughs> before we let you go uh you're losing a, a great colleague on the on the sidelines or i guess around the, covering that team uh and sarah orleski and uh I, I know she has gotten the uh the all-star treatment this week, but a uh, few, few words on Sarah and, uh, and what you're going to miss uh, about her around the, uh, the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers uh, facilities. Yeah. I kind of got to know her when I was at TSN because I was, I just got into the CFL so big and Sarah was always, I was, you know, sort of from Winnipeg and it's, <laughs> that's Sarah's town. And, and uh, we just got yakking about the CFL. And I just, I just love talking about the league with her because she brings a different perspective from the, the numbers heavy nerd perspective. She was not embedded <laughs> with the team, but she was, she was around the Bombers. So yeah. you would, we would have different perspectives and I loved her take on the game. And she knows, you know, gets to talk to the players and gets the behind the scenes access that TSN on air people would. Right. So I always enjoyed it. She's a good friend and I'm so happy for her. Uh, it's one of, it's happy, but sad, right? Yeah. You're happy that someone's moving on to something that they feels better for them in the moment. And you're sad to lose them from this part of your life that you, uh, you love. It's, it's sad that she won't be on the sidelines at the great cup. And you know, that, uh, you know, you had to watch from afar. She did her yeah. last game right? and the banjo bowl. So yeah, it's, uh, but couldn't be happier for her. I was uh, telling our friend, Steve Milton today. There are a, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of men in the Canadian uh, football hall of fame media wing. 
Uh, if there if there was a fitting first woman to go in, uh, Sarah Orleski gets my vote. So I'm starting that campaign, and I hope uh, you help me with this one. Uh, DT, appreciate this, my friend. Uh, I will see you this weekend. Looking forward to seeing you here at uh, Tim Hortons Field. Love it. Appreciate you having me, brother. And my thanks to Derek Taylor for joining me on Speaking with the Enemy today. Uh, Speaking with the Enemy brought to you by Red Tag. Red Tag.ca Back to the Beach Sale is on now. Extend the summer heat and start planning for your fall and winter beach vacation now. Book today at redtag.ca. Uh, that'll do it for us today. You can catch a brand new episode of Speaking with the Enemy as part of Tiger Cats pregame ahead of Saturday's game. And I hope you'll join us right here on the Ticats Audio Network. I'm Louis Butko, hoping you have a great day.